ready. And he's, you've got a bottle of, of Guinness sitting out tonight. Yes, I have a bottle of export strength Guinness. Yes, for an extra. Um, chopping good stuff it is too, just now. I, as you right. know, we do like a Guinness. Um, that, that even that even looks like Guinness. Aye, we'll come to that shortly. But no, uh -huh. this this is this is the good stuff. This is this is for an export strength, which is let me see. Seven and a half percent Guinness, Justin. Seven and a half percent. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Now, there's a there's a nice poured glass of Guinness. So uh Mark Kerr's got in early. He's saying good evening, lads. Uh Julie Mason is saying good evening. Hello, everyone. Uh Connor Ryan is saying uh, good evening. Uh uh, let me see. Darren uh, Barney Milligan is saying uh evening all and uh well Seamus Tobin saying hello. Uh Sherman Wright is is saying hello. Sherman. Uh but we, we better do we better do the uh show because it's a double dunder tonight. Oh, we've got lots on tonight. We have we our usual news item. Then we're, we taped the wee interview earlier on and with Barry Connor from Kennedy Castle. Uh, then we have saved the best to last because we've got Anthony from Irish Whiskey Auctions coming on. And as everyone knows, we talk about this all the time. Irish Whiskey in the secondary market and collectibles and people collect it. I mean, it's exploded in the last little while. So, yeah. Excited to talk. Excited to talk to Anthony later on. He's a he's a bit of a character. Okay, so that's good. 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 I'm look. I'm looking forward to it. He's already had the baptism of fire with me tonight already. So I like that. <laughs> I like Brilliant. that. So, um, what's first tonight, then, Marty? First, Justin, as usual, the news, and a bit of good news for a change. The UK and the US announced on Friday that they were going to end the ridiculous tariffs that were being imposed on Scotch whisky. Now, wow. Liz Trust and her team have been going over to the Liz Trust, for anybody who doesn't know, is the UK uh, Foreign Business Secretary. And she'd been going over to the US to try and get these, these tariffs lifted. Now, remember, the tariffs on Scotch whisky and other things as well. This has nothing to do with these industries. Now, it's cost the, the Scotch whisky industry half a billion pound. Half a billion. Now, there's 50,000 people's jobs at stake here. How can people hold up to that, that that tariffs? They've only given it a short break here, Marty, haven't they? Four, they've given it a four-month break, but I think as people have actually decided this is, I mean, it's ridiculous. The, I mean, as I say, 50,000 people's jobs at risk here. Now, you've got the COVID restrictions obviously hitting the the tourism industry for visitors to the distilleries you have a lot more competition now for scotch distilleries because i mean there's the, all the u.s stuff and obviously the, all the irish stuff so it's about time that this was done now Corin betts of the scottish whiskey association said the industry's breathing a sigh of relief and she paid tribute to liz trust now as i say this is only a four-month hiatus but i think it's I think it's probably going to lead to to uh, getting rid of them totally forever. Hopefully, um, remember the EU announced today that it has it has followed suit. Obviously, after Brexit, there's two different negotiating teams. But in June this this year, if these tariffs aren't lifted, there's going to be a fifty percent tax on bourbon and American whiskies into the EU. It'll devastate. I mean, it'll devastate the, the American industry as well. So, finally, a bit of good news. Wow. Other good news: the budget this week. All alcohol duties were frozen. Wow. For, for this, the whiskey taxes were frozen for the second year in a row. Uh, there had been a plan to put uh, duty on top of this, but obviously with COVID for the hospitality industry, it was it was decided that keep the taxes the way they were. Now, according to the Chancellor, if you believe him, uh, this is this has saved people seven point three billion pounds. Okay, so it was there would have been an extra two pence on a pint of beer, one pence on a pint of cider, eight pence on a bottle of wine, and an extra thirty pence on a bottle of whiskey. So finally, I mean, hopefully this is again. 
good he's, news. He's got to get the money back somehow, Marty, because they've spent an awful lot. They have, Justin. They have indeed. But let's be honest. One of your own domestic industries is basically a decade's worth of growth in Scotch whiskey was wiped out in a, in a few months. Um, I mean, there's no industry in the world that can take 35% decline in sales. Uh, you know, just, they just can't. No. And as you can always as try possible, selling the stuff to India. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, the Indians have 150% Oh, right. I forgot about goods. that. forgot yeah. about that. So, so right. Everybody, hopefully this is that done and all put to bed. So that's that's about good news. More good news, Justin. This week, the the sod was cut, the turf was cut on a new distillery down in Garrison, down in County Fermanagh. Gosh, I thought you were talking about yourself there. What? <laughs> the sod was cut. <laughs> so, oh, <laughs> corona cut. No, I uh, think the, the, the clevers. So... This distillery, it's the Scots Irish distillery. Now, not not to be confused with the Ulster Scots who went across to the US and so on and so forth. It's actually named after an Angus Scot who there's a mention of a distillery on this actual site back in 1798. And Angus Scott allegedly uh, fled for his own, own safety. I don't know the whole story, but we'll maybe find that out some other time. And he fled, went to the US and set up a bourbon, uh, distilling bourbon and became a millionaire. Now, the first sod was cut, if you like, by Father Brian Darcy. And when it's up and running, it will provide around 25 full time jobs and they'll be distilling whiskey, vodka and gin. Now, one of the owners, Connell Treaty, Hope I pronounced that right. Is that not? Is that Tracy? Is it not? I think it's Tracy. That Tracy. That, yeah, I think that's how you say that. I'm not 100 oh. percent sure. I, I bow to your superior knowledge, Justin, in all things. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> the building will take between three and four months, and it'll be ready for the end of May. Uh, now, one of the things is they're trying to be carbon positive, so they've planted lots of trees to offset any of the CO2 that's being being produced in in the building of the. The distillery and they're also possibly going to install a water wheel to generate the electric which not only will be extremely pretty but it'll also serve a function so yeah good on them good on them. we good. like that kind of thing good, good, like that kind of thing good 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 okay now uh now, another story yes not so good a story now this is Mar Hall over in Bishopston in Renfrewshire in Scotland. And it's closed, obviously, because of the COVID restrictions. Mm -hmm. But they have a skeleton staff on. Now, in they came, one of the guys working there, a little guy, 24 years of age, heard a noise and went down into a bar where he found three guys had broke in to steal a £3,500 bottle of Macallan. That looks like your house, Marty. I thought... Justin, I thought that was my house too, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, no, it... Uh, obviously, whiskey prices have shot up in the last little while. And one of the things we'll be talking to Anthony about. But it just goes to show now that people realise how much some of these things are worth. And people are targeting them. People are going to break in and try and steal this kind of stuff. But they're going to get caught on reselling that, surely? Well, Justin, the thing about it is, I know this sounds really ridiculous, but there's lots of three and a half thousand bottles of Macallan about. Hundreds, thousands of them. Um, it's not, it's it's a rare bottle, a very collectible bottle, but it's not, you're not talking one or two bottles of it, you're talking thousands of different uh, permutations of Macallan. So I don't know, maybe they'll get to sell it, maybe they will... Uh, I don't know what they'll be doing with it. Knowing some of these people will probably crack it open and have it with a bottle of ginger. But it's it. Anyone who's got collectible whiskies, do make sure that it's insured and and well locked up. You know. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Michael Matthews nice. says, "Who's the window cleaner? Nice contract. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very, Very good. Very good. Is that my glasses? If I take them off, I can't see. 
Is that what he's talking about, or is he talking about the whole? No, he's talking about. He's talking oh, about oh yeah, the, oh the, oh the, 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 the number of windows in, in the in the castle. Or I was getting ready to send the boys around to you, Mike, or for 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 saying that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. your, your your voice has gone up a bit. Your uh, is it? Your bit, uh, am I too? Am I too loud? Am I? I'll turn myself down. <laughs> Always. Again. Always. I'll turn myself down <laughs> again. Is that better? Is it? Yeah. That's better. Oh. Now, our last story tonight is the North Texas Irish Festival held in Dallas. Okay. Right. And there they are. Mm-hmm. Now, it's lovely. Mm-hmm. Now, it's nice to see all these Irish things and people buying into the whole international Irish and so on and so forth. Uh-huh. And this week, they've published an article telling people what to eat and drink at uh, during this festival. Let me so guess, example, champ. Uh, no, actually, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. They have corned beef and cabbage, uh, fish and chips and Irish stew. Okay. Uh, soda bread. And this is where to get it, I know. I didn't know you could get soda bread in Dallas, but there you go. There okay, you go. yeah. But to go along with the feature, they have put a little muffin with some green freckles on the top of it, and a pint of Guinness. Now, put up the picture of the pint of Guinness, Justin. There we go, yeah. Is yeah. There, I think there's a close-up one. Is there? Can we... It doesn't look great, Marty. I, I, yes, I, I, Justin. I'm, I'm afraid to do this. Oh, my right. God. Make that full screen for us a second. Oh, oh see, if you, <laughs> see if we can spot. That doesn't look much like a pint of Guinness to me. It doesn't, it doesn't look anything like a pint of Guinness at all. <laughs> It looks very suspiciously like a tin of coke. A coke float, nearly. <laughs> a coke float. Imagine, uh, imagine you walked into a bar and someone served you that as a pint of Guinness. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, yes. I, don't, I don't think you'd want it. I don't think you'd mm. want it. Right. I, I don't think you'd want it. This is proper Guinness, and it doesn't look anything like that. No. Anyway, so that's the news. That's the news this week. Over and done with. Now, right. Earlier on, we had an interview. We did an interview with uh, Barry Connor from Kennedy Castle Spirits. Now, yeah. Kennedy Castle, we did the interview, and a uh, very nice chap he is too. Mm-hmm. So we recorded this earlier on, and he was very, very kind to come on, and we had a bit of a yarn with him. So Here we go. And remember to comment, like, and share. Tell your friends and uh, watch us on YouTube as well if you don't have Facebook. So uh, simple as that. Now, the dapper blend. Now, there's a couple of things I want to... We're going going to your castle this week, Marty. Are we getting an out and finally? We're finally getting an out somewhere nice. Is lockdown over? Are we out of lockdown? No, 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 we're not. But... We're doing it by remote, Justin. Virtually, we're getting a, a trip away. We are <laughs> joined by Barry Connor, uh, who is from Kennedy Castle Fine Spirits. Hello, Barry. How are you? How are you doing, lads? Thanks for your time. Uh, no problem at all. Now, this is a new venture for, for Kennedy Castle, but Kennedy Castle's been about for a very long time. Where, That's where, are, you, where are you located at? Yeah, so uh, I'll just give you a brief uh, background on Kennedy Castle. We're we're situated smack bang in the centre of Ireland, um, County Offaly, um, between Tullamore and Burr. So we're right at the foot of the Slave Bloom Mountains, um, equidistance from Galway and Dublin. So it's as I say, it couldn't be any more central. Um, the castle itself was built in 1209 originally, um, and it's been a, an in its existing form since around 12, 13, it had a fire not long after it was first built. And it's been in, its existing walls can still be seen today. It's a, it's a four-star operating hotel, um, currently owned by my partner, who's um, a, t- a Florida-based Irish-American called Colin Breen. Um, other investors include um, Derek Warfield. He's one of the founding members of the Wolf Tones ballad band, uh, the Irish okay. band. So, yeah, it's... You know, we're we're building our own bit of history there as well with the with the team that we've put together. Um, yeah, so I suppose just most recent history, the the guys bought it in twenty fifteen, and with the sole purpose, you know, obviously restoring it to its former glory. It had been an operating castle back in the eighties and early nineties, and kind of had been taken over then in the fall of the Celtic Tiger. Like every other hotel in Ireland, suffered. Yeah. 
because of the downturn. But um, the guys purchased it with a mind to getting it back to its former glory and then also installing, you know, a whiskey experience in the castle. So um, with that so in mind, um, we, you know, Kennedy Castle Fine Spirits was born. <laughs> so the whiskey, the whiskey's been an integral part of the, the whole operation from day one then? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the plan, as the castle sits at the moment, it's um, about 70% of the castle is operational as part of the hotel and the, the, the stables and outhouses and the workhouse at the back of the castle. Uh, the castle was actually, back in the 80s, it used to be um, Irish forestry. It was a, a college for Irish forestry and there was a, a fairly unique workhouse at the back of it as well. Um, right. So that there's, it's all storage and stuff at the moment, um, but we're transforming it into a whiskey experience now. So the old stables, the workhouse and all the outbuildings at the back, will that's what will encompass our, our, you know, our whiskey experience and bonding, bonding and aging facility and blending facility and then tourist uh, visitor attraction, you know. Excellent. Now, down that part of the world, you have a, a, there's a lot of whiskey history down there. I mean, mm. you have Tullamore and Kilbegan. Um, yeah, just a, a little bit further north, um, and and they so you you have a nice little whiskey region there, which you is do, of which, course, yeah, which is important because certainly people have this idea that all the whiskey guys are really in competition, but they're not. It's it's a whole it's a whole industry left in itself. You know, it's so interdependent. Exactly. Yeah. The just um, the Tullamore Distillery is actually it's right on the outskirts of on the outskirts of Tullamore um, and the first when you leave Kennedy Castle heading back towards Tullamore it's actually the first building you meet when you enter the town and this thing is it's impressive for anybody that is interested in Irish whiskey or the production of Irish whiskey and Tullamore the brand of Tullamore Dew um, you need to get yourself to, it's an absolute they used to have a, a visitor experience in the centre of the town They've, yeah. actually, they've actually closed that now and they've moved it all out to the actual distillery. So if you give, after lockdowns are over and things are back to normal, you'll actually get a proper, you know, run round of, of their production. But you, as you say, you've also got Kilbegan, Glen de Lough is not far away. Yeah. You know, you've, you've got all these, you know, they're really strong names in the world of Irish whiskey now and yeah. they're all built around the Midlands, you know. Yeah, I, I was down that part of the world last year. I took, a, I took myself on a little to in anticipation of being busy all summer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I actually okay. broke down once in the Sleeve Broom Mountains and it was great. So I <laughs> sat in this lovely B and B uh, and whenever I, I went to check out there was no charge for all the alcohol I could had consumed. <laughs> oh, so God. It, was, it was it paid me to break down at, in the Sleeve Broom Mountains, you know. Uh, I can't I can't guarantee that we you get the same kind of treatment. <laughs> No, when you check in <laughs> Kennedy Castle, but yeah, we'll definitely fill you with alcohol. That's one thing. <laughs> right. so, uh, you yeah, to... they, just at the moment we we broke ground at the just before the first lockdown on uh, the transformation of our and the restoration of our buildings. Um, it took us uh, quite a while to get all the plan information and everything that we needed because it's a eight hundred year old building, you know. Yeah. Um, and everything needs to be restored properly and we want to do it in line with obviously with the environment and everything but you know we want the building to look as as natural and as authentic as it as it stands now you know um, yeah. and we don't want to leave such a footprint where it you know it's it's not authentic so um yeah, yeah we broke around just before the the last lockdown started so obviously our hands are tied now um but as soon as the things get back to normal we'll be Tearing in, and we hope to have our visitor centre finished before the end of the year. Excellent. Lovely stuff. Yeah. Now you've got some great products sitting in the windowsill behind you. Uh, <laughs> tell us about some of it then. Yeah, so as I say, Kennedy Castle Fine Spurs was brought to life around two years ago. Um, myself and two of my business partners, two Florida based guys, Jeremy and Colin, and we launched our product with two brands, um, or one brand, two products. Um, so we started off with our 10-year-old signature, 10-year-old age, Kennedy Castle. Um, and they also the other one was the Dapper Blend. Both of them blended Irish whiskies, um, mm -hmm. both offering 
very distinctive, you know, flavors and smells and aromas that kind of, we wanted to bring the whiskey to a wide demographic of people so that it would, it would appeal to more than just one one group of people, you know. So yeah. I can probably jump in and give you a bit, bit of information just on the 10-year-old, first of all. Yeah, if you so, can do that. I, I see yeah. on the website, it's 10 years old, um, blend it, and it's finished in Oloroso sherry casks. That's correct, yeah. So that giving it a nice nutty flavour, nice... It, it does, um, and so it was aged 10-year-old bourbon, ex-bourbon casks, American bourbon, Um yeah, and and then for the final year, it's moved into an Oloroso cask. So it gives it a nice smooth, but also you can get the smells of, and the taste of the nuttiness um, from the Oloroso. Um, it's very, very clean spirit. Um, easy to drink on its own, which I would <laughs> prefer. Um, yeah. You know, I don't like uh, mixing my spirits too much, but also with the... You know, you can still get the sweetness of the the virgin oak coming through as well. So, you know, it's it's not it's not a raw spirit. It's it's very very smooth. Also, you can get small tinge of sweetness, um, but not not too much. You know. Yeah, Justin's the cocktail guy for us. <laughs> I, I, yes. <laughs> Listen, I, I I don't I don't mind. I mean, it it, it looks nice and it it doesn't look like it's it's uh, a big heavy heavy strong drink to me. No, I mean, it's um. The, the the finish that I feel coming through it, you get um, a nice butterscotch, um, so that it's not overpowering, but you can still get the aromas of the nuttiness from the Oloroso. So, so it's it's a it's a very well balanced spirit, yeah. um, and pre- preferably I drink it neat, you know. <laughs> yeah, I've gone after my own heart. That's like yeah. I normally, normally take it occasionally yeah. a wee teaspoon of water, but that's about. That's yeah, about but uh, it's it's been actually it's been our American market of you know. It's been received really, really well in the American market. You yeah. know, they like their they like to drink their spirits neat, especially the the, the age stuff. You know, mm-hmm. um, and we're happy to give it to them. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> it's, it's funny you mentioned. I've actually been in the Four Green Fields Bar in Tampa. Uh, <laughs> I, I, sort of I was over and uh, I was over visiting family who were living in Tampa, and I was in the Brilliant. Four Green Fields. So yeah, so um, Colin. Uh, Colin Breen, the owner, the uh, principal owner of the castle and the president of um, Kinnard Castle Spirits, <clears throat> he owns the chain of pubs. Um, I suppose for the people watching, just a bit of information on them. They're thatch pubs. They're yeah. Irish based in, in Florida, and they're actually, all his buildings are, they've got thatch roofs on them. So <laughs> it, they're very, they, you know one when you see one. They're it's, very, it's, very unique. It's very strange because you're you're down near Tampa Bay and yeah. they've all the, all these beautiful big high rise apartment blocks and, and, and there's this little thatched cottage. <laughs> a wee thatched well. cottage in the centre. <laughs> of it. Of, um, yeah, so Col- Colin was the brains behind the operation and he, um, you know, he's he's worked for a number of years bringing this all to life and the <clears throat> Kennedy Castle and all our spirits are very very well represented throughout his his all his pubs in Florida now. You know so. Yeah. Um, I think he's he's day by day he's working on getting them all hooked on it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, yeah. that now, yeah. uh, now just on your website, um, mm. you, you've you've three listings, um, and there's one that's not available yet. But t- today's a rather special day for it. Um, uh, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, um, yeah. So as I say, we started off with two um, products, uh, the dapper and the ten year old, but we didn't want to. We didn't want to be a, a company that just, okay, so we're just going to release two products and then hopefully that everybody in the world buys one. We want to be a, a company that's seen to be looking to the future and growing and, you know, adding to our portfolio. Um, so we've seen that there was a, well, not, it wasn't very well represented or, you know, in the Irish, in the Irish market at the moment. We have, so we went about setting up um, a, a, fa- a beautiful spirit actually that it's aged it's a single malt that's aged in cider cask irish cider casks mm-hmm. um and it's actually today is the maturation date of it it's been aging for four years and um yeah there we are <laughs> um sure. and and today is the maturation date yeah brilliant um so we'll be expecting that by the end of the year yeah uh, again um Plans were that it would be, you know, as soon as it was matured, that we get hit the ground running with it. But yeah. obviously, 
everything being locked down now, um, getting bottled and production and stuff has just slowed up, you know. So we're hoping um, the second quarter of the year, half is maybe, realistically, you're probably looking around May time. Um, yeah. You know, so, uh, again, very, very unique Irish product. It could, like Irish whiskey aged and Irish cider casks. Very, very unique. Um, we think in the next in the years to come that it'll be, you know, one of the one of the more popular aging methods that people are going to be doing. Everybody's doing these unusual cast finishes now, aren't mm. they? Yeah, they are. And um, the the other, I suppose, the other main one that would stand out to mind from an Irish point of view would be the stout finishes. Um, yeah, you know, and it can be it. The stout finish can give a, a much darker complexion to the whiskey. Yeah, um, it does. You know, um, so I think I think the cider cast unique. You'll enjoy it when you when you take I, it, you know. Um, I think the thing about it is the cider cider cast. It's going to be probably more of a summery drink. You know, I think it would lend itself quite well. You know, nice, beautiful, sunny day. Exactly. You know, maybe and I'll, I'll, maybe even chance an ice cube. <laughs> maybe <laughs> chance an ice cube. That, that, that's me. That's me. Um, <laughs> that's your cocktail. Changing, that's changing. That's changing my courses a little bit. But I, I, I could see where that would maybe maybe be a really uh, really worthwhile one to be doing. You know, for that certainly for that time of year. Now, it's also sorry. It's also Marty. It's a it's a great drink that could lend itself to all kinds of mixed drinks. You know, mm -hmm. when, always thinking about our American friends. Um, yeah. You know. With the, the the flavors and aromas of it, really lends itself. To, yeah, exactly. Yeah, all that, <laughs> yeah. That all that fancy it. stuff that we're trying our best to get used to. But um, yep, yeah. So now the dapper blend. Now there's a couple of things I want to pull to say about that or pull up about that. It's yep. aged in Chablis wine. Yeah. So the dapper is actually there's three processes to go into the dapper. Um, it's a four-year-old blend. Uh, yeah, that's us there. If mm -hmm. you can see, I'll just give you a, a bit of information actually on the the brand itself first of all, because um, it's a pretty unique piece of history. The Dapper blend. Um, so it's actually called the Dapper. For anybody that's into a bit of history as well, you go on our website and uh, check it out. It's called the Dapper blend. The tale of Ronan O'Callaghan. Um, so Ronan O'Callaghan was a young Offaly guy, young Offaly native, but never seen himself growing up in the the, the wilderness of the <laughs> Ireland. So he took himself off, at a young age, he took himself off to Dublin and he liked the finer things in life and the fine establishments that came along with it. So, um, like Justin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> exactly. Um, so then he, uh, you know, fell in with influential people of the period and anyway, if, Long story short, he ended up back at the castle with the owners around 1922 and there was a house fire and he, he, he perished in a house fire in the castle. But his remains are actually, he's buried in the grounds of the castle. Um, oh, what a story that is. Uh, I, I can feel I can feel Disney coming and, and, and <laughs> wanting the movie deal out of this, Barry. Uh, stop, I know. Uh, so it's... Um, Really, really interesting story. The whole his whole uh, his whole story is on our website there. So if you go on through our whiskies, it gives there's a link that takes you to the tale of Ronan O'Callaghan. Really, really cool story, you know. So it's um we, again, all our products are going to be an homage to the castle, to Kennedy Castle, to the surrounding countryside, and that the history that goes along with it, you know. And, yeah. and there's a lot of history, uh, you know. Yeah. So, well, um, yeah. So the whiskey itself, yeah, it's um three components to the whiskey. So it's. It was aged, first of all, in virgin American oak. So you can actually see that it's a little bit darker than the 10-year-old. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That's obviously the virgin oak, sucking out the minerals out of the oak, and it puts it into the spirit, making it a little bit darker. Um, and then double distilled malt that has been aged in bourbon cask is added, and it offered, that offers a nice fruity compound. And then triple distilled malt, that is also that's been aged in Chablis casks is, is added then also. So there's three components that go into it to, off, to 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 bring a spirit to life that's just you know it's fantastic spirit for it's it's I think it's a week short of four year old. <laughs> so it's <laughs> a um, week short. Yeah, so that's it. You know, it's very smooth spirit, vanillas, toffees, but then also like the Chablis also brings through nice fruitiness and stuff as well. So yeah, so is it bringing through fruity or you know is there some of the chablis wines have that uh 
slight acidity to them. So yeah. Is, is, that, is there an element of that coming into it as well? No, it's um, not so much acidic. Definitely, you can definitely get the fruitiness from on the nose. Um, you know, mm-hmm. on, the, on the palate, you're definitely talking, you know, the vanillas and the toffees, but you can get the, you know, the, the nuttiness on the nose. But definitely no acidic, no. It's, um, Excellent. again... Excellent. Again, it can be definitely drunk on its own, um, but, you know, spirit drinkers, they say now that 30% of Irish whiskey drinkers are from the female mm-hmm. category, so, yeah. you know, and they like to have mixed drinks, and, you know, it, it lends itself very, very kindly to being put through mixed drinks also, you know. Yeah. I like to have mixed drinks, but I'd like to point out that I'm definitely not female. <laughs> we can see that, Justin, we can see that. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's a it's unique it's unique that we brought double the still malt and triple the still malt through, um, you know, and then having it all blended together to, mm-hmm. to such such a ro- array of aromas and tastes, you know. Well, the double the still gives that a bit more body to it, a bit more weight, is not it? It does, of course, and that's where the fruit. I think the double the still offers more fruitiness rather than yeah. the triple the still from the Chablis can, as you say, it just it. it Brings out more minerals rather than, you know. So, um, yeah, the the comp the, the combination of the three together is definitely, you know, a really really strong blend. You know, excellent. Now, the people who watch this, we're going to have a competition. We're going to have a competition, folks. <laughs> oh, I love competitions. I know love you them. do. <laughs> I know you do. What we're going to do is we've done that. We, what we normally do, we are going to, if you comment, like, the and below or tonight's show, then you can be picked at random to win uh, a little sample bottles. And we'll send these out. Uh, probably we'll do the tasting live on the show in two weeks' time. And that gives me a chance to get the winners' uh, addresses and stuff. And then that gives Barry a chance to get the miniatures sorted out and posted. Yeah, so, no problem. If you like, put a wee comment in below tonight's show. And if you're lucky, you'll be uh, in receipt of a miniature. So, that will be that. And, Barry, it's been a pleasure having you, my friend, and we'll catch up with you very shortly. And Thanks very much, guys. Thanks for your time. No problem. It's a pleasure. No um, problem. Just a, just a, I suppose a quick one. The, both our spirits and all our spirits are going to be distributed north and south. Um, so, they're going to be, you know, on the off trade in, in the north yeah. and south. And, the, and they are in the coming weeks, but... As as we grow and get further into the year, and when there's more light at the end of the tunnel, yeah. you'll see, you'll see us um, you'll see us getting represented in shop windows a lot more regularly. You know, so keep an eye out, and we'll you know by all means um, pick a bottle up and let us know what you think. You know, absolutely, and we look forward to it. It's all crazy times. It's all everything. At that's, stage, yeah. You can't say from one day to the next what's going to happen, but. It's uh, been a pleasure talking to you, Barry, and we shall catch up with you again soon. All right, guys. Cheers. All the best. Cheerio. Well, uh, what did you think of that? (laughs) Very nice. Uh, Nice guy. Good project. Interesting things happening. Good. Excellent. More more of this kind of thing, you know? All right. Uh, Fantastic stuff. Your your sound's gone again, buddy. Am I too loud, am I? Yeah, yeah, I'm too loud. It's very loud indeed. Is that better? And your echoey as well. Am I? Well, it can't be helped because I had to put you in mute because you were putting in all the distillery effects in the background. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. So uh, obviously when we click in and click out, it upsets the apple cart. Uh, let's see if it's echoey for uh, our next guest tonight. Yay! As if by magic. Nope. He's I'm, there. I am there, yeah. You yeah. are? Yeah. Anthony. Um, yes, sir. Can you see? Where are you? I'm all right. We yes, can. I'm very good. I'm very good. All good. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, this is Anthony Sheehy from Irish Whiskey Auctions. Now, welcome. How are we? All right. Yeah, not bad. It's it's Saturday. I've I've had to forego washing my hair to come on live with you too. So, <laughs> um, look, you know. Uh, no comment, Justin. No comment. Mine's in the sink at the minute. Yeah, all right. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> What's Marty's excuse? My my I, my I, mine's, mine's a full head, but I'm going grey. 
We're, we're part of the silver fox. I hate That's to be going grey. I would I absolutely hate that. And I mean, you know, it doesn't, um, <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't bode well, you know. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't. Now, Anthony, you run Irish whiskey auctions, and I, I unfortunately I, I, I do. I believe you're getting busier and busier and busier these days. It's it's growing a little bit. It is. Uh, it, I think a fair description would be to say that we are growing a bit. Yeah. Yes. Now. How did it all come about? Give us the the story of how it came about. And it's uh, it's actually well documented at this stage. I mean, um, people sort of go, you know, when people write websites and they write their sort of history story, and it's usually up there with Walt Disney. But ours is actually true. I mean, we uh, we we collect whiskey. We we moved home from France in uh, Christmas '07, and myself and whiskey, myself and Katie. Had been uh, collecting whiskey, and you know we, we we were drinking whiskey when we were in France. Uh, two thousand Christmas two thousand and seventeen, we bought a, a bottle of whiskey for Katie's dad, a bottle of Cooley whiskey, no less. Sleeve Naglock. He was actually born on that mountain, um, and it got seized by customs in their generosity around Christmas. And we were above in Dublin, or down in Dublin, or up in Dublin, whatever you say when you go to Dublin. <laughs> and uh, we were talking to one of the guys in, in Mulligan's Whiskey Shop, and we were just telling him the story about the bottle being seized, and he just said, isn't it a shame that there's no auction house in Ireland? And I went, it is, isn't it? And sort of driving home the road, and you're sort of, it is, isn't it? Why isn't there? I sort of knew that there wasn't, because... I'd been buying from the UK sites for a while and buying from, from the German sites and, and stuff like that. So literally 21st of January 2018, I came home from... Can I uh, started... I, I created the Facebook that, that very night, 21st of January, and I mean, people can verify this. That very night, uh, I created the Facebook page, Instagram page, Twitter page, started looking at the domains and bought them all, sat up till four o'clock in the morning and got threatened with divorce and abuse by my wife and uh, created Irish whiskey auctions and thought, so how hard can it be? I now know how hard it can be, but look, that's just loads of naivety and, and, and loads of uh, dogged determination and it's got us here. Well, it's, uh, it's a fabulous thing uh, because... With the growth of Irish whiskey and the growth of people's interest in Irish whiskey, which is two slightly different things, you know, there's the interest in Irish whiskey and then there's the the, the industry in itself, and it's, uh, I mean, you must be absolutely snowed under with the amount of bottles that's coming in. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> it's a double-edged sword because. Mm. You, you're, I mean, the, the workload is just, is growing exponentially and we can't, we can't get ahead of it. And that's, I, I, I hate to bemoan it because it's the most ridiculous problem in the world to have. It's like <laughs> what you created is successful and it's working. So um, it, it's, it's great. I mean, it is great. And, and, and thank God, I mean, the, you know, people, I mean, I, I've always said it that, we could have the prettiest website in the world, but without the support of buyers and sellers, yeah. we'd just have a pretty website. Yeah. So, you know, I could bang on about whiskey this and whiskey that, but it doesn't make any difference if we don't have people actually giving us bottles mm -hmm. and people then buying the bottles as well. And, and thank God we're, 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 we're getting great support and we have nearly from day one. I mean, yeah. we, we, but, we just grew exponentially. No, it, I think people... People like collectibles, but they also like investments. They like yeah. they like knowing that something is bankable because I mean banks are there's there's no interest rates anymore, you know. So they charge you for the privilege. They charge you for the privilege of looking after your money. Now, M Marty, to go back to a question that he he posed there earlier about customs, has the uh, Brexit has the North South divide in uh, sort of are we in the European Union? Are we not? Is England in the European Union? Is it not? Is Scotland? Has that has that upset your your, your business model at all? In fact, it's had the opposite effect. 
Wow. I mean, we're we're probably we're probably one of the few businesses that nearly will benefit from Brexit because we're um, <laughs> ridiculously so. We're one of the few European-based auction houses. So what was happening is a lot of guys who would have used uh, the UK auction sites for for years, and I, I'm one of them myself. I mean, I buy whiskey. I genuinely buy and collect whiskey and drink whiskey. Thank God. Um, you know, I've left my pioneer badge at home tonight. Um, <laughs> so we, uh, what's happened now is because of Brexit and because of the changes, the way that bottles are shipped. I mean, you could buy your bottles in the auctions. And then when they arrive in, now it's currently not happening with Northern Ireland, but when they are, arrive in, in Ireland or anywhere in Europe, you get lumped with a huge bill for duties and VAT. And then the, 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 the transport companies are putting their, their stick in as well. And, and some of them are charging sort of 50, 60 euro for the privilege of delivering your bottles to you as well and for handling the fees. Yes. So I, I've heard anecdotally um, guys who have bought bottles from auction at, you know, one guy I know bought a bottle at 290 euro. And by the time he got it home, it cost him over 500 euro because wow. of, of the additional duties and all that sort of stuff. So that has is, that is sort of put a lot of people off of buying from the UK-based UK auction houses. Um, I know Whiskey Auctioneer have got their German base now as well, but it, there's still that sort of, if you're buying a bottle that's at their, their UK base, then you if you're in Europe, you have to, to pay it. Um, yeah. Between Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland, thank God we've we've maintained that uh, that free trade so that we can send bottles to uh, Justin. If you want to top up your uh, your pension or anything like that, we can send you bottles. There's no problem at all. I just smuggle them. <laughs> I know you'd be cracking them open and drinking them, Justin. We know we know the secrets out. We know. Yeah. He's, uh, no. Now you say you collect you collect whiskey. It must be very tempting. When these bottles are coming in for you to go, hmm, I like this one. Uh, but, but how how do you how do you separate that? Because I know did. how do you have that conversation with the seller? You say, look, I'll I'll give you fifty euros for it, or you can put it in the auction and make three hundred euros. I mean, it's a no brainer. So yeah. we don't. I mean, one of the things that we set out from the start was integrity. Yeah. Um, I, 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 and both Katie and myself said that you know we we got to be people that. You can trust. I mean, you're you're going to be giving us a bottle of whiskey. Some of them yeah. worth thousands of euro. And I mean, even yeah. if they're not worth thousands of euro, they're your hard-earned euros or pounds that's paid for the bottle. So you know you're Precisely. trusting us to have it. So integrity is everything to us. It really is not everything to us. So we we you know it goes right through the auctions. Um, we don't interfere with the auctions. I mean, when you could travel when the world was a better place i mean we we went to italy one of the times when the auction was on because we literally have to respond to a few emails and a few inquiries but we can do nothing when the auction's live you just have yeah. to let it let it let it take its course yeah all the works in the preparation of the thing I assume. There's, a, there's a bit involved in that i mean we were working today until i don't know what time tonight and we're back in again tomorrow it, at the minute it's seven days a week we're we're yeah. we're, we're wow. grafting seven days a week now, what all is involved in the process of it? I I have a bottle of whiskey for sale. So say I want to sell you... I believe you've got more than one bottle, Marty. Come on, tell the truth. No, 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 them. pick up something else, please. <laughs> Put the Bushmills down. Come on. I have enough Bushmills already, please. Okay. Now, this is, this is one that's actually on your... On no, your you list. can't give me that one either. I've got loads of them as well. Though. Come on, Marty. Uh, Come up with something. Uh, how about this one? Oh, that's nice. Yeah, they're all right. Yeah, yeah we okay. like them. That's now, cool. I, I want I want to sell this. Okay. How do how do I go about it? Um, so what do you do with it once you get it? We we we've tried to make it as as easy as possible for people to get bottles to us. So um, if you are you know around Ireland, we've got our depots. So we've got a a, a depot in Dublin. We've got a depot in Cork. We've got a depot in Care County Tipperary. We're bringing on stream new depots uh, shortly as well. Um, we've also got our Northern Ireland uh, offshoot. Uh, uh, Paul in the, in the Belfast Whiskey Club helps us out as well. But all, ultimately what you do is you send the bottles, submit the bottles into us. So first of all, you've got to register on our website. 
once you're registered, you then submit the bottles into us. So literally, we have to physically have the bottles. So you send the bottles to Irish Whiskey Auctions, buy one of our depots, or by literally posting it to our, our address in Dundalk. Once we uh, get the bottles, we actually literally start a process. So we photograph every single bottle. And again, this was important to us because the integrity thing. So we don't use library photos at all. So one of the crazy things that we've had to do is, like last month we had 1,100 listings on our, on our auction, and this month we're, we're probably going to be in around the 1,300. So literally every wow. single bottle we have to photograph. So it's, it's a lot of work. So what we'll do is we'll take that bottle, we'll document it, add it to our system. We set it against your account, Marty. Um, so uh, obviously you don't have an account with us because that that would be a conflict of interest and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, if you did have an account with us, uh, so the accounts with us, uh, we process the bottle, document it, notice if there's anything of, of note about the condition of the bottle or anything like that. We then send it down to our photography room. We've got a guy there, uh, Barry, who takes all our photographs of every single bottle. We'll take two to three photos of it. So if you look at our website, there's uniformity. Every bottle is literally shot in the same conditions, all on white backgrounds, all bright lights so that you can see it as it is. Um, and then um, it goes to auction. So we're uploading at the minute. We go live on Friday the 12th at 5 p.m. So we're busy uploading. I think there's about 700-odd bottles up on the site at the minute, or 700 lots, as Katie likes to correct me on, because <laughs> one lot could have 12 bottles in it. Um, once it's live then on the site, it's nine days our auction lasts for and people are bidding away. Some items will have reserves on them. Um, if, the, if the reserve's not met, obviously the bottles, it's like a traditional auction, you know, but it's all online. It lasts nine days, not dissimilar to the UK sites or anything like that. So uh, it's nice and simple. Mm -hmm. Once the bottle's sold, it uh, reached its reserve price and the highest bidder gets it, we then receive payment from the, the buyer. We then send them the bottle, we package it up. So that's that's a huge operation because say a person buys a bottle, it's not like an off license where a person buys one bottle and they just put it in a sleeve and post it out or, or anything like that and they've got loads on the shelves. I mean, a, a person can buy uh, a miniature, uh, a big presentation box and a single bottle on their own and that all has to go into one box. So we literally had to come up with a, a bespoke packaging as well that, yeah. you know, was suitable and, and protects the items enough to, that you can ship with uh, couriers and, and, and through, the, through the systems and all that sort of stuff. Once they get it, they check that the bottles uh, is exactly what they thought they were getting. Uh, it always is because we use the exact photos and we describe it as, as is. And then um, we pay our sellers and you get a big fat check or, or, <laughs> or whatever it is from us. Um, so it's nice and simple. It, it, the logistics of the whole thing must be absolutely just it must as it gets bigger it must just be like uh, yeah know? it was all great crack when it was two and three hundred <laughs> bottles it's not such great crack now right i can't imagine uh just but it's fantastic that, that it's being so successful um no we've got a, we've got a picture of a, a bottle here what, what's what's the deal with that one marty yes no i want to talk about expensive bottles of whiskey and this is the the, the origin the, the, the full daddy. size was yes now do you want to talk a little bit about this because it's <sighs> it's, it's, it's something else now i mean there is there's something to be said about it uh, it is yeah i don't know look it's beautiful it, it, it's beautiful it, it is unfortunately for it I think it just came out just at the wrong time. Um, it could have got a lot more fanfare. I mean, it, it deserves a lot more fanfare. It's a 45-year-old single malt um, from the old Middleton Distillery in Cork. Um, it was released in February 2019. Um, it was, sorry, it was penciled to be released, but it actually came out in March. And we... Um, <laughs> We were one of the first, we were the first uh, auction houses to have one in our auction. Um, it hadn't been, hadn't even arrived on the shop shelves in Ireland and we had one in auction. A guy had bought it as, as a speculator and, and sort of so thought 
here's a bit of an opportunity. There's only 44 were ever released into the wild. Um, they were sold at 35,000 euro. Um, he bought it and contacted me. And what, as he was in the process of buying it, he said, he rang me and sort of said, look, do you think there's a go? And I, I nearly had an accident and, and, and wet myself <laughs> when he sort of rang me. And uh, we, we had it in our March 2019 auction, just as the country was falling apart, actually, with COVID. <laughs> so it was impeccable time. It was actually just like me and Katie. We, we came home from France uh, Christmas 2007. Just as the country was falling apart for the first recession, yeah. brilliant. Well, at least at least <laughs> you picked uh, when they start the auction at the right time. Well, <laughs> go. We, that was that was a number one decision. I, I mean that that caused huge uh, consternation with us because, I mean, literally we we had the bottle and we were ready to go live. And I I, I remember the next minute the government came out and said were shutting down and, and pubs and all that. And I mean, you, your, your punters for a 35,000 euro bottle are fairly thin on the ground, as you yeah. can imagine. Um, and it would be the likes of a publican or somebody like that, that would buy it and, and for a, a, a show Display. off piece or a pride of a pride of place piece or, or, or that. Or um, Justin. <laughs> or, or Justin, sorry, sorry. With his, with his or or, to, or to put in a hotel and somebody to knock. <laughs> Yeah. Actually, just uh, I was listening to that earlier on. I mean, one of the things that that you commented on is is the the, the trackability of stuff like that. I mean, I'm sure it was a limited edition bottling, so it had a number. So the number would be recorded. I mean, uh, a good friend of ours, um, Flash in in Revolution in in Waterford, his bar got broken into uh, two years ago, I think, and there was a, a, a valuable bottle stolen, but he had the bottle number, so. I've sort of publicized that as much as possible. So if it ever comes yeah. on the secondary market, well, oi, messed up. Well, the point I was trying to make was that people are targeting to, to steal these. And it's a, yeah. another thing I want to bring up here for, for yourself. I mean, there's so many bottles of valuable whiskey that was brought out that it wouldn't necessarily have been valuable at the time. It may have, may have been a premium bottle at the time, but now it's just went in value. And people are targeting thieving these things and just just t trying to tell people to be to be careful you know um, that and that's something that that um that that happens as well i mean again you mm -hmm. buy a bottle of of anything these days well not anything but you buy a bottle if you had a bought that bottle of uh uh, Middleton, this uh, silent distillery, um, for thirty five thousand euro. I mean, it's now worth. I mean, we sold it, so we set the world record for the single most expensive bottle of Irish whiskey ever sold, um, at forty two thousand euro plus the fees. So it was nothing's been sold publicly at that, um, no. at that at wow. that price since then. So um, no. it, it it's exceptional. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I want to bring up about. <laughs> With anything that's worth money, you get people faking it and forging it. Now, what do you look for yourself to, to, to check to see and make sure it's legit? I know the Irish market's maybe not hit as badly as, as the yeah. Scottish market has been, but it's coming and you kind of know that it's coming. Absolutely. Once there's money involved with anything, as, as you know, I mean, whether it be a pair of trainers or a, a watch or a belt or a handbag, I mean, once Absolutely. there's... Once the sums of money involved, it, it will inevitably happen. Um, what can you look for? I mean, <laughs> I, I I don't want to say it out loud, but it's true that a, a, a really good faker will probably go under the radar. Yeah. In, in truth, I mean, it'll it'll just be so hard to spot. I mean, a guy who really, you know, I mean, other than you know taking a sample of the liquid itself and and getting it sent away for analysis. I mean, yeah. you know, they're, they're getting so good at, at forgeries. But, I mean, most of the, 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 the common stuff is you're looking at the seals, you're looking at the labeling, you're looking at the L codes, you're looking at the bottle style itself, uh, fill levels. I mean, there's, there's a few things. I mean, you know, you, you're, you're looking yeah. at these things. And we, we have, again, thank God that we've built up a, a good um, relationship with a lot of guys. I mean... I'm an idiot. I keep telling everybody I'm an idiot. I mean, one of these days people will believe that I'm an idiot. Um, we've got um, 
the guys that we can call on, we can reference to, we can f send them photos or videos or whatever the case may be. And then, I mean, ultimately, if I've a real doubt and it's a real high value bottle, I'll bring the bottle to one of my, yeah. my guys that are, are there. And, you know, as I say, thank God we've built up a good relationship, but a lot of guys who know a hell of a lot more than me, you know, and there's, and there's different people that have, I mean, you, our own Paul O'Can from, from Belfast uh, mm -hmm. Whiskey Club. I mean, he is as mad as Box of Frogs, but I mean, he is a genius. He is you as know, mad he, as a Box of Frogs. He is, absolutely. <laughs> and a Box of Frogs that are half open as well. Um, but he knows his stuff. He really does know his he stuff. And, and it's great to, to have him on, on the end of a phone or or Pot Still Will or Leo Phelan or, or Michael Fogarty or any of these guys. I mean, there's lots of guys yeah. out there that just know their stuff. Chris Hennessy for, for, for some of his old stuff is, is phenomenal, you know? Yeah, it, it's, it is unfortunate, but it's just something that if people, if people get offered on, and I know that you see it all the time on social media, people offering up bottles and, oh, I've got this. And I think just if you get offered something that's too good to be true, there's probably a reason for it. Um, I, I, I think that's what sort of helped us as well is that we're not, you know, it's, it's a reference point for people. I mean, it's again, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a level of credibility. And again, thank God that we've built up the credibility that people now trust us in that. So, uh, yeah. look, it's, it's yeah. great. No. No, you must. Can I fill my glass again? It's empty. And I, I can't talk without drink. Okay. Oh, no. Go, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Don't forget to uh, follow us on YouTube and on Facebook as well. Uh, buy me a coffee.com uh, stroke Irish whiskey is where you can uh, support us. And you can catch us on Anchor on a Wednesday or wherever you get your podcasts as well. Now, you must know of the location of some really good bottles. You know, there's people hanging on to bottles that are unicorn bottles, you know, one-offs. Um, uh, what would you like to see coming through your hands? You know, what there's there's bottles out there that you know. Um, I don't know, actually. Do you, and do you know that? Because, again, we've been blessed. I mean, I, I'd love, I mean, I, I, I do genuinely look at some of the UK auction sites with envy. Uh, yeah. And they're doing these, you know, the the the, the real ultra high end McAllen's and Bowmore's and and stuff like yeah. that. I mean, it really oh, look. I mean, from a from a pure economical and business point of view, you're looking at bottle selling. I mean, when I was doing my research, and again, this is figures that that people sort of get blown away by. When I was doing my research for um, Irish whiskey auctions, when we were setting the business up uh, in May two thousand and eighteen. There were six live auctions at the time. And between the six live auction sites, there was 18,000 bottles of whiskey being sold. Wow. That's incredible. Whiskey Auctioneer, who'd be probably one of the bigger ones, they had an auction at the time with 6,700 bottles in the auction. The top eight bottles alone were worth over half a million. Yeah. So the money that's, that's involved in, in, in high-end scotch, yeah. I mean – Unfortunately, Irish whiskey isn't there yet. Um, we're getting there. I mean, we, we, mm -hmm. we've 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 got a few uh, um, high end ones. We've actually got one coming up in in this month's auction starting on on Friday. We've got a a chosen a limited edition, only a hundred bottles for JJ Curry. So, but but Anthony, yeah. Irish whiskey is much rarer than, than Scottish whiskey. So, why is is there a disparity in, in value then? We're just we're so we were a bit behind the curve, and I mean again on on, on, on volume and selling, I mean we're we're what I think we finally made it into the double digits of, you know on on world uh, whiskey sales. I mean we're in the ten percent, eleven percent now, but I mean we're still way way behind Scotch and way way behind. We didn't have the the legacy bottles we don't have the 50 and 60 year old bottles that they do in scotland that that gives them that that ultra premium collectability um we we i've had and i comment i mean anybody who watches our videos and and that that we do before our auctions go live i have my little rants and raves and and talk about um 
you know, legacy bottles of, of Irish whiskey. So you've got like the old Middletons, the 25-year-olds, the 26-year-olds, the 28th anniversary, the 1973s, old bottles of Teeling, an old bottle of the 34-year-old old Corain bottles, bottles of old Comber, you know, bottles like that that <laughs> they're not making anymore. They're not, <laughs> they're, 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 you know, they're, they should be real up there in value, but we're just, we're not on the world stage yet. And, and when Irish whiskey does get on the world stage, that's when it will really kick off. I, okay. I've been I've been telling a few people that the lower the lower end of the whiskey market. So your Middleton twenty twenties, which Middleton very rare. There's there's what, not very rare. Sixteen thousand bottles of it, and yeah. it's it's basically going. I think I've seen somebody paying a thousand euro for a bottle of it. But so the bottom the the sort of lower end of the collectible market. Is extremely buoyant, and people are making you know double their money, tripling their money, whatever. Yeah. But the high end, of the 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 old bottles, the old Middletons, as you say, and the old Corian and the old Tullamore, the Daly's Distillery, and and whatnot, it's extremely good value for money. It's ridiculous. And people are, it's ridiculously cheap. Yeah. So um, we've, we've been asked another question here: Do you deal with old bottles of rum as well? Oh, we've started to, but again, look, I mean, a lot of this comes down to um, knowledge. I mean, again, you, you, we have to have a, a knowledge to put them into the auction and that. Um, some of the rums, yes, there is a value in them. I mean, again, uh, what I'm drinking at the minute, the Dunvilles, I mean, they've had that Port Mordaunt at, 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 at what I think it is, 2,000 euros or something like that, a, a bottle, I think it's in excess of now, if you can get one. Um, but we haven't, we've had, you know, entry level cognacs, we've had a few parodies, we've had a few, few rums go through, but nothing of significant value. I mean, again, it's, it's a field that I think there's growth for us in, but just at the minute we've, we were only, it's a chicken and egg scenario. It's like we branded ourselves uh, Irish whiskey auctions and everybody goes, well, do you not sell Scotch or Japanese or American? And we sort of go, well, we do. It's, it's how do you say it? It's, it's all comes down to grammar. Exactly. Because I can barely speak English, it <laughs> goes, is it Irish whiskey? Uh, no, sorry. Is it Irish whiskey auctions or is it Irish whiskey auctions? So we had, we, Justin we, and I had exactly the same <laughs> argument the other day. Exactly the same. Because there's a few people have said to me, you're interviewing guys from India and you're interviewing guys from the States, but you're the Irish whiskey review. And the way I look at it is, it's all the same. It's all basically the same ballpark. And we're all what we actually connected. are is... A, a review of whiskey in Ireland, based in Ireland. Yeah, it's oh, it's like we're 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 a whiskey auction house based in Ireland. It's yeah. it is the chicken and egg scenario. And again, I, I've I've only ha I'm having this conversation a lot lately. Of we need people to trust us to give us their high end Scotch, their high end bourbons, their high end Japanese, or or whatever it is to attract yeah. buyers. But we also need the buyers there to attract the sellers to give us the bottle. So it's it's yeah. chicken and egg scenario. We'll put another... like this, whenever someone's sending you in 13, 1400 bottles for an ocean, I think you've built the trust up. I think you can sort of guarantee oh, that you've got that. There is that, absolutely. But it's still yeah. very much, I mean, it, it's still, we're still small. I mean, we are still small when you think about it. I mean, when you look at, as I say, there was 18,000 bottles. There's, there, collectively in the UK, there's approximately 16 whiskey auction houses. Mm -hmm. we're we're one of two in ireland you know we're, yeah. we're we're and again in europe i mean you've got a couple now that's based in europe but i mean we're, we're not ones. we're not on, on the market we're the same as as the the the, the scotch oil. okay we've but, had another good question in here and it comes from james james what do you think uh are the sleeper brands purchases <laughs> under 150 euros that may get drunk and leave the remaining bottles to be stars of the future. Fill us in, fill us in. <laughs> One, yeah, it's just a, a very, I won't call him a wise friend of mine because he's not a raven lunatic as well, but he said to me that um, ultra-collectible whiskey is good drinking whiskey, and that's the key to it. I mean, if, if whiskey is not a good drinker, then it won't be ultra collectible because everybody it'll just be a merry-go-round and everybody passing the same bottles around and it won't really yeah. accumulate. You need people to be drinking whiskey. You need people to be drinking bottles. You need them to be opening. So uh, as 
as James knows, I mean, he he may or may not be affiliated with a, a certain uh, Donegal uh, yeah, we'll say not. Um, but I mean, again, Silky, the dark Silky is is a prime example of that. I mean, it's a, it's a cracking uh, drinking whiskey. And, you know, now on the secondary market, because people were cracking it open and drinking it, the dark Silky is actually getting a bit of a premium now. So it is, it, it's a great thing. I listened to a podcast. So on my journeys on Thursday, I was telling Marty earlier on, I was listening to him and, and Laurie O'Dwyer. Um, it was like Beavers and Butthead, you know, but it wasn't, it was worse than Beavers and Butthead. <laughs> I nearly found out about a Belfast distillery as well. I was looking forward to nope. that. No, 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 that's, no, that's no, from no. next time. Um, but I was listening to another podcast as well, and the guy was saying that it was it was on the other end of the spectrum rather than 150 euros. But he was saying that he was in a whiskey shop once uh, around the early noughties, and there was a bottle of whiskey on a shelf for 10,000 euros. And he was going, Who in the name of God would pay 10,000 euros for a bottle of whiskey? And he was like, That's just obscene, it's disgraceful, it's terrible. And he now realizes that he was an idiot and he should have bought it because it's now worth a quarter of a million. Yeah. Wow. You know, That's, so. Yeah. Oh, that That's, would leave a sour taste in your mouth, Marty. I don't know about well, that. Would it? Or would it not? I mean. It would annoy me. I know that. It wouldn't annoy Justin because Justin doesn't need the money. Yeah. It would like, just I, go into pile. Would. Right. Okay. I just, you know, yeah. Scrooge, Scrooge make that, Scrooge I, make I know Justin. everybody wants to know what's in that cupboard there, but they're never going to just see cash. what's in that just cupboard. Only cash. No, I don't want to know what's in that Multi cupboard. Multi It could, be, it could be anything. <laughs> I'm going to answer my uh, answer to James because I think this, these are phenomenally good value. And the, the, the cask strength writer's tears, they're collectible, they're annual released, and they're not, they're auction wise, they're not doing much more than what they were for, for, for sale. But, but it's, fab the early it's, fab it's fabulous whiskey. It's yeah. really, really good. Um, but again, it, it, it translates to that, exactly that, that yeah. it, it has to be drinkable. It has to be, it, ha it has to be good whiskey because you need... I mean, everybody needs, as a collectability, everybody needs people to be drinking them because that makes them rarer. So the more exactly. people that drink them, the, the rarer it gets and that. So, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I had yeah. another good question in here tonight. Uh, what percentage of your buyers are from Ireland? So we're still, we're still probably high 50s, 60s. Um, I mean, we, we're, I'm not saying that we're struggling. I don't mean we're struggling, but it's, Social media is a dark arts and a dark place. And it it, again, we, you know, trying to get out there. The cost of shipping is probably our biggest barrier to getting bottles off this island. Um, yeah. Very few companies will take on alcohol. None of them will insure it because it's liquid glass and alcohol. I, I often laugh that I've had conversations with courier companies saying, no, 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 we don't ship alcohol. Yet every bottle I've ever received is by them. And you're sort of going, oh, no. uh, hello, it's here. Hello. Um, yeah. It, it, it's it's the biggest thing. I mean, if we can the more the cheaper we can get our shipping, the more affordable we make it to others right, outside of Ireland. And but yeah. I still think I mean we, we Ireland Irish whiskey still has a way to go. Um, long long way. In go. in in Asia, in America, uh, in in Europe itself. I mean, it's it's getting very popular in Eastern Europe and that. But look, we we still have a way to go. Well, that's that's why uh, I reached out and. We had done an interview with a guy who has started a distillery halfway up the Himalayas because there's lots of Irish whiskey he knows nothing about. And all you need to do is get a couple of Irish distilleries starting to plug into Asia and the thing can just go, you know, a totally different level. Actually, now that you mention that, we're looking for a depot in the Himalayas. Would he, I wonder would he be interested? He, no. I would say the same boy probably would. He's yeah. really smart. <laughs> I would think he would be, he'd be well up for it. He's a shrewd character. He's a yeah. very, very interesting guy. Now, um, in terms of your own collection, you say you collect whiskey. I don't have any. I don't know what you mean. <sighs> don't know what I mean. What would be, what would be the one that you would you, you show off to people? What's the one you turn around and say to people? I got, I got it. This is the one. Uh, there's, there's nothing really. There's no one bottle. I mean, anybody who's been at our offices in Dundalk. I mean, pre-COVID. We welcome people with open arms. I really do. I mean, because I think 
the biggest surprise for most people is that I'm not a lunatic operating out of a shed in, in the bottom of someone's garden and going, ha <laughs> give me a bottle of whiskey. Should we be grand? <laughs> um, we've, we've got, we, I mean, we invested heavily in our infrastructure in, in our offices and all that sort of stuff. So we've got, um, we've got our offices there. We've got high tech security, all the various things that we need. But I mean, when people come in and they go into my office now, I've got a wall of whiskey, literally a wall of whiskey. That's myself and Katie's. I'm not allowed to say my collection because apparently we're married. She gets half, or if she loves me <laughs> off, she gets it all. Um, but we've got some great collections. We've got um, we've got a lot of Middleton stuff. We've got. I'm a. I keep saying it, but I'm, I'm waiting on the the affiliated membership to the Teeling Fan Club. Um, I'm a big Teeling fan. I. I I really like Teeling because of Cooley. What what they, I mean, I don't think they get half the credibility. Definitely not in secondary market prices. They don't get half the credibility that they deserve because Cooley, without Cooley, there wouldn't be it. There, there be wouldn't Irish be whiskey. an Irish whiskey. There, there, there literally wouldn't be an Irish whiskey business. I know everybody 100%. rants on and says about IDL and the, the coming together saved Irish whiskey. Yes, but without Cooley. <laughs> most of the brands that sell it these days wouldn't have had stock. So or, no, or exactly. I mean, again, another one that I that drives me up the walls that people don't give more credibility to. I, I have said this for years. I personally think Dr. John Teeling rescued the Irish whiskey industry. Yeah. Uh, he totally did. Yeah. Because he, he had the vision and the foresight to start making whiskey and selling it on to other people, third parties, and doing different brands. Different, and without them, it just there wouldn't be the Irish whiskey industry today. No, absolutely. Is. absolutely not. What, so what I'm drinking, I'm drinking, I'm drinking the Dunvilles. I mean, again, it, it, it uh, you know, yeah. it, it just Brilliant. wouldn't exist. So, my biggest, I, I suppose, we've I've a lovely set of three bottles. So, I've a 21, 26, 30 year old teeling, and all three of them are signed by the three teeling lads. Uh, that's probably one of my my real, uh, I, I love it. Um, I just just love the old Cooley stuff. I mean, again, drinking wise, I mean, it's award winning whiskey, but yeah, nobody gives it a second thought. Well, I'm last week I was asked about what cast strength whiskey I like, and, and I'm very remiss of me. I've never mentioned the Rowan Co 2020 port cask. I mean, that's Bush Mills, and I, I think this is like Milly Vanilli. Um, you know, what do you mean? He's probably singing and not really singing. <laughs> This isn't. This is Bush Mills, a thirteen-year-old all port cask whiskey at cask strength for seventy-five seventy-five pound. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's fabulous stuff, and I, I I was very remiss of me not to bring it out. But Bush Mills are doing, as you say, they've been selling on all these this stuff and not really getting the credit for it because other people have bought it and licensed it themselves. Now the Causeway Collection and Middleton Twenty Twenty. Those two bottlings coming out. Those. Since they have appeared on the scene, Irish whiskey prices have just went. They have all just risen up in the last few months. Um, can you explain that? Can you give us your thoughts on this? Because the bottom, you know, yes. the, the middle. But is this not is this not a bugbear for some people? Because they're only out in certain European countries, and you can't get them. Oh, it's a bugbear for a lot of people. I mean, everybody gives out about you know well. Social media is a great place for people to vent and say that, that they didn't get a bottle and they why didn't they get a bottle when somebody else got one or, or whatever the case may be. And I'm, I've, I've sort of strong opinions on that, but I'm not allowed to say them. Katie won't let me. <laughs> um, she does muzzle me from time to time. Can I explain it? No. I mean, it, it is just there's so many new people coming to Irish whiskey. You mentioned something earlier on about banks. I mean, People are looking for something else to put money into. Um, I I've I've have a, a spiel that I I talk to people about, and when people say to me about you know investing in, in Irish whiskey, and I said, well, bottles of whiskey are the best. I mean, people talk to me about casks, and people are always asking my opinion. I keep telling them I'm an idiot, and they still want my opinion. <laughs> um, I. I I sort of say that like, you buy what we talked about, the high-end bottles of Middleton at, at 2,000 euro or a high-end bottle of Teeling or a, a, an old Coleraine. I mean, a, an old Coleraine one, I, 
another one of them ones that just bugs me because or Bushmills. Actually, probably the biggest annoyance I have is old Bushmill Millennium malt. It if it said anything other than Bushmills on the front of it, I think it would sell hand over fist. The world seems to have this hangover about you know Bushmills whiskey and it's it's you know it's the it's the dirty whiskey, it's the northern whiskey, it's the proddy whiskey, it's the this, it's the that, it's the other. And you just go, would you ever shut up and drink this stuff? <laughs> Um, it's fabulous stuff. It's 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 just it is phenomenal whiskey. It really is phenomenal mm -hmm. whiskey. Um, but we 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 were sort of saying that if you have a few pounds to spend, you buy a bottle of Middleton, twenty six year old or nineteen seventy three. You take it home. You have it there. You've something tangible. It's not like stocks and shares where you have to give notice. Or Bitcoin. If push comes to shove in in five years' time and you're under a bit of pressure for money, you take it out of the bottom of the wardrobe, you contact somebody like me and you say, listen, sell that bottle of whiskey for me and you have your money in two weeks' time. I mean, mm -hmm. it is a real asset to have. Um, saying that, I mean, it can go down as much as it can go up, but it's hard to envisage any bottles going down realistically. Especially, especially the 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 top, the the higher end stuff. The stuff. That, I mean, I have I have a couple of bottles that, to be honest, Are you I silent distilleries. I, I silent distilleries. I couldn't afford to open them now. No, I you've mean, two of them. Is that what you're saying? You're admitting right that you've got two. You've got two silent distilleries at thirty five thousand each. Is that what you're yes. Well, I bought them uh, because they give me a free tin of coke with them. Ah, and also, <laughs> to mix with it. All right. Okay. Very good. Uh, th that's a private joke because a friend of mine once was talking about he was drinking grey goose vodka, and I said, "Well, you were in Jury's Hotel in Dublin drinking grey goose vodka by the bottle," and I said, "What? What price was that?" And he said, "I can't remember. It was like two hundred and fifty euro a bottle or something stupid," and I said, "Well, what on earth were you?" Buying that for he says, Well, they give you a free ton of coke with it. <laughs> you know I right, think actually, a... Middleton might have given you a can of coke with the, the silent distillery. <laughs> I think so, too. No, as I say, I have a couple of nice bottles. Of, I have an old cumber, you know, the, the seven year old one that was uh, bottled. I got a girl got in contact with me and I went and picked it up and I paid really. I the girl or the body? Oh, oh, the bottle. The bottle. Oh, um, a really, really nice girl, really, really friendly and a lovely girl. But uh, I picked it up at a reasonable price, and now I was asked the other day what I thought it was worth, <laughs> and I thought not as much as it's going to be, because it's going to be worth an awful lot more than that. But I have a few other bottles as well that I just I, I bought, and now I just couldn't afford to open. Because, ah, because... Oh, I have an opinion on that. So I, I, okay. again, I was listening to you uh, and Laurie talking about exactly what you're saying there, that you've mm -hmm. bottles of whiskey at home that... You're thinking you can't open, but in truth, it only cost you what it cost you. I know. So but... it, it, to say that it's worth pot still will, uh, will Murphy, one of the great, just you know, sages of of wisdom in in Irish whiskey. He had. I remember having a conversation with him about the Jemson fifteen year old pure uh, pure pot still, the 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 one of probably, uh, one of the best pot still whiskies there is out there. And at the time, they were going for about a thousand euro bottle. And Jim uh, Will goes, I drank about 20 of them. And he goes, I have <laughs> empty boxes upstairs, you know, this sort of scenario. I have 20 grand I drank. And I goes, But did you really? It only cost you what it cost you. So if it yeah. only cost you 150 quid, that's all it's costing you. It's not really costing you the future future value of it. Mm. And, yeah, the, you know, it's it's it should be. You should be able to sort of just enjoy it for what it is. Now, yeah. saying that, I also have the opposite opinion. This is the, the schizophrenia <laughs> that kicks in, is that, you know, when when people are giving out about flippers and all these guys on social media again, I mean, Waterford, uh, the pilgrimage was one of the bottles that everybody lost their shit about and was given out about. And you sort of go, you know, you bought the bottle for 150 euro. You bought it to supported the distillery to maybe taste the new make liquid and all that sort of stuff and you had the best of intentions of buying it so it's sitting at home next minute you see some egypt like myself coming on and going selling them for a thousand fifteen hundred euros you're sitting and you're singing i i, I can actually fifteen hundred will make a difference to me it will 
you know, it'll make sure my bills are paid for a wee while or it'll, you know, it'll put extra money into our pocket this month or whatever the case may be. So why wouldn't you sell it? I mean, that's the other side of the argument. Exactly. But like this, there's nobody who particularly likes the flippers when they've missed out. Yes. But by the same token, by the same token, my my colognes, okay? I have a full, I'm, I'm watching with bated breath because I have a full collection of cologne. That's yours in this month's auction, is that what you're saying? No, no, I it still is, have Martin. it Come on, tell the truth. Come on, I still have tell the truth. No, but the thing is, I've opened all of them. I have all of them opened because they're, I think what Cologne's doing is absolutely amazing. Yeah. But I'm very interested. Now, if I had missed out on all of those, I would be very cross. But the fact of the matter is, I bought one of each to have as a collection because I think it's a sound investment. Now, whether I sell that tomorrow or in five years or 20 years' time, I still bought it as an investment. And although lots of people are, don't like flippers, and there's times it grates on me a bit too, but the fact of the matter is, if people are making some money, good on them. You know, when it all boils down to it, people need to pay their bills. You know, they do. Absolutely, so, and, and that's the thing. And I mean, that's I think that uh, nobody can stand in judgment. And I, I'm not getting all parochial and... Bibleistic and all them other words that you use. It's just <laughs> you don't know anybody's situation. I mean, again, as I say, you, you bought a, a bottle of you might have stressed yourself to buy the 150 euro bottle of whiskey or the, the whatever yeah. it was. 1500 euros or a thousand euros can make a considerable difference. It can <laughs> mean it can mean an extra, you know, a night out, or it can mean a pair of shoes, or it can mean it can mean. It just depends or, on, on your thing. And and people giving out about it just can, I'm not allowed to swear, but can do one. Yeah. But like this, I do find myself at times giving off a bit, but then when it's all said and done, I, I buy stuff as investments. Um, and if I can get my hands on a couple of bottles of this or whatever, and I think to myself, you know, in a few years' time, it's going to be worth some money. I come to you and I will... Uh, Fire it over to you. And you, you, have to, of, you have to put a caveat of, there, actually. Sorry, Justin. You have to put a caveat. Other auction houses are available. Other auction houses are available, yeah. obviously. Now, we've been <laughs> asked other questions here. Uh, where do you recommend storing expensive whiskey? Well, put it in your house insurance. I would recommend that. But invest That's, in an underground safe? Well, underground doesn't make any very... Somewhere cool and dry, not too much temperature for... Clu- flux. Don't swear. Fluctuation. Um, so it's somewhere sort of out of direct sunlight, obviously out of direct sunlight. I mean, direct sunlight can do not only to the whiskey itself, but it can in, in you know, the, the, the labeling or the box or the presentation um, and somewhere with a sort of ambient temperature rather than, you know, again, I've heard people say, we'll put it in the attic. That's great until your attic starts to heat up and then bottles are sweating and, sweating and popping their corks. Oh, and, you move house and forget about it. <laughs> Well, that that'd be <laughs> negative, all right. Yeah, you couldn't do that. Um, investment, uh, not investments. Insurance is one of the things that that is 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 there. I mean, as well. Again, Marty is is talking about his cologne bottles that he that he bought, and so if something were to happen, you know, again, touch wood that it never does. But if something were to happen to the house, or it got stolen, or or fire, or something like that. He's no good coming out and handing them a receipt and saying, this is what it cost me. Because he would no. never in a million years be able to replace it at that value. So no. that's one of the things that you have to take to consideration and is that, you know, come up every year and, and sort of do a stock take. I know most whiskey guys will have a listing of the bottles and, and, and keeping a track of, of the valuations of them and, you know, watching the auction houses and all that sort of stuff. But it's... Very few insurance companies will actually cover bottles in your house because it's not as if it's highly flammable or anything like that, you know. If stuff would happen, <laughs> no. you know, um, or or very portable for people to steal. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, I, I think the theft thing is isn't really. I'm not saying it's not really an issue. In most people's houses, they're more likely to rob it to, as you say, mix with a back can of coke, than mm-hmm. know what they're actually stealing. They're coming in looking for stuff that they can get rid of in a hurry or, or cash or yeah. jewelry and that. And, and, so that's not it. But it's it's the it's the replacement value is the biggest thing. 
Yeah. And we've had another good question in from Alex at uh, Balvenie, uh, 10 years old, no longer made. There was outcry because they stopped making it. I know it's probably a stupid question. Maybe not. Uh, <laughs> will it go up in value anytime soon? Uh, I think that was, I think all bottles will increase. I mean, I, I, there's very few bottles that will, you know, stagnate or not go up in value. Um, it depends on, I <laughs> There's a long debate that I've had. Their initial re uh, retail price point. So if bottles are coming out, and if they're, I, if in my opinion, if they're too high initially, it, it nearly stifles them in the secondary market. So what happens yeah. is, they, you know, they don't go up by much. But I, ultimately, I think all bottles will go up. Now, you've old bottles of Paddy, and you've old bottles of Powers, and you've old bottles of that, and they have a value. But they're, you know, you people come to us and they'll say, oh, I have a bottle here. If, it's 50 years old and you go well it's not 50 years old you might have it 50 years but it's <laughs> it's not a 50 year old whiskey you know and so that's the biggest thing yeah. it is now we've run massively over we we always try and keep it to an hour but i've had an absolute blast talking to you uh but i'm going to let you go um we will try and catch up with you again soon cool. i honestly i wish you every success and I can't believe how how busy you are and and how important you are to the Irish whiskey industry because it's fabulous that people are buying and selling and collecting and it's becoming more interesting and more interesting and more invested in it as well. One of the things that I set out to do was the more people that drink Irish whiskey, the better it is, and the more whiskey I can put in more people's hands the better it is for, for, for everything, for everybody, because ultimately, you know, jobs are created. You guys, I mean, you know, tour guides coming in to, to, to bring in people into Belfast. They're, the more interest that they have in whiskey, the more you're going to be busy or telling the story, the more yep. jobs are going to be created in, in distilleries, the Absolutely. more, you know, reps that's going to be out there, the more bar staff that's going to be everybody. It's just, it's a win-win for everybody. And so, we do a lot of things to that people go to me, you know, well, why are you doing that? Or we facilitate deliveries or whatever the case may be. Because it's a win-win. I mean, at some stage, somebody might go, just have a bottle here that I wouldn't mind selling. Contact that redhead Egypt and see, will he sell it for me? But you know, that's, that's all good. What, one final question for Anthony at uh, Whiskey Auctions Ireland or Irish Whiskey Auctions or whatever you want to call it, whatever way around you want it. Jennifer, any, weekends. I dress up and call myself Jennifer. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> any idea how good the Devil's Keep is as an investment? Purchase price is 10K. Marty can answer that one because Marty would be the expert on that one. I'll, um, I'll throw that hand grenade. Write it back at you. Oh, I thanks very much. For <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. I keep seeing Mr. J. Bradley popping up all over the place uh, with trying to get people to invest in Irish whiskey. There's lots of stuff you can invest in Irish whiskey, and I think one of the key things that Anthony came out with is the the recommended retail price. If it's too high, then possibly uh, it it might not make as much money as you would think. I I don't know. I can't see in the future. But um, thanks very much. For There's other investment for ten grand. Actually, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll how about it? I'll put it like this: for ten grand, if somebody said to me, hey, "Anthony, I have ten thousand euro. What will I do with this?" I would go, "Well, right, we're going buy a twenty-five year old Middleton, twenty-six year old Middleton, thirty year old Middleton, uh, and a twentieth anniversary Middleton." There's your ten grand. You've got four bottles of whiskey. You're not all your eggs are in one basket. You, if push comes to shove in a few years' time, you can take one of them out, sell them, and still have the other three. So, look, 10 grand's a ball of money. It is a lot of money. Always do, and whether you're buying off me, anybody, make sure you look into, make sure it's the right thing to do, make sure you trust yeah. the people that you're going to do business with, make sure that everything's going to be right. So that's all I'd say. Yeah. Now, I, honestly, Anthony, I can certainly talk to you all night. Um, Fabulous, fabulous. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Um, we'll, ha we'll have to catch up again soon. Uh, I'm available for bar, bar mitzvahs and christenings. <laughs> and we, anything. I mean, Katie, Katie pimped me out for anything. She just sends me <laughs> out, you know, because I'm obviously Excellent. so good looking and stuff as well that I have to go out and do these things, you know. You're a, listen, you're a, there was a touch of sarcasm there. You're a very handsome. There was chap. no sarcasm in that at all. <laughs> 
I am gorgeous. <laughs> now, listen, take care. Now, folks, remember, we have a competition running. You have a comment in here. You have a chance to win uh, some spirit from the Kennedy Fine Spirits Company, Kennedy Castle Fine Spirits Company. So, thanks to Justin. And again, thank you, Anthony. An absolute pleasure. And take care of yourself, mate. Take oh, care. All right. No Catch you soon. All the best. Good night. So so, Monty, that, that's us. We'll have to wrap up. The questions are coming in so fast, I can hardly put them I up know. on the screen. I need a pay. I don't know about you. <laughs> yeah, so do I. Go, go to the wee boys room. No, I, I mean, in all honesty, what, what a nice guy. Great fella. Lovely conversation. Very open, honest. Mm -hmm. And go on and get, go on and have a look at auction sites because it's fascinating what, what some things are worth. And some things you think are, eh, that should be worth more money or, and keep a track on it. It is a fabulous thing to do. So, listen, thanks very much, guys. And I'm sorry it's run over so much, but um, it's been good. It's unbelievable. Listen, so we have some great guests this week. Uh, we've had uh, Barry Connor from the uh, Kennedy Castle. Uh, uh, there, he's on screen. Irish Whiskey Auctions is on screen there. I'm going to close the show with uh, your mentions. Don't forget, follow us on Facebook. Follow us on uh, YouTube. Uh, subscribe to the podcast as well and well <laughs> we'll uh, speak to you again uh, same time same place 10 o'clock saturday night next week good night cheers guys take care